Hey, Corbin here, and in this video I'm going to talk about setting up Mach 4 to use an automatic pool changer rack, how to find the tool pocket positions, using a custom screen set that I wrote. I'm going to talk about how to do the pin mapping inside of Mach 4 for the particular hardware, and then I'll talk about how we find the tool pocket positions or the tool stations for an automatic tool changer rack. Before you start, I recommend backing up your entire Mach 4 hobby folder. So let's do that. Okay, so in Windows Explorer, I'm going to go to the C drive. I see my Mach 4 hobby folder. I'm going to right click on it. Oops. Right click, copy, right click in the empty area, and let's do paste. And it's going to make an entire copy of the folder. And if we ever need to go back to it, we can just rename our old one to Mach 4 hobby something else and rename this one back to Mach 4 Hobby and we'll be good to go. So all the customizations are free and open source. I have them in a GitHub repository and what I do is I have releases. Check the link below to go to the web page for the re release and let's check it out. So here's the page for the releases. The current one will be at the top and to download you just have to download the Mach 4 Hobby V whatever, this is V4, zip file. Uh, you don't need the source code files. So we're going to go ahead and download that. Okay, now we're going to install the files. Okay, and so what we have here on the left are the files I downloaded. And on the right, we're going to go to the Mach 4 Hobby directory. So inside of the download one, we have modules, and we have this Corbin's workshop folder. We can ignore the .vs code and DS store. We should delete those. And we're going to go to Mach 4 Hobby on the right, and it has a modules folder. So I'm just going to copy the Corbin's workshop modules folder to the one on the right. And so now I, what I have here is we have Mach 4 Hobby, we have modules, and we have Corbin's workshop. Okay, that installed the module. Next, we're going to install the profile. And we're going to go to Mach 4 Hobby on the right. Click on Profiles. So assuming you set up the default Avid CNC profile, you should have an Avid CNC folder here. And inside of here, you're going to have macros. And now on the one we downloaded, we're going to have another macros folder. So inside here, there are one, two, three, four, five folders, five files. I'm going to select all five, and I'm going to drag them over to the macros folder on the right. And it should say, replace the files in the destination. Yes, we want to do that. All right. Now, the thing about Mach 4 is it compiles these. So to ensure that we're going to get the latest ones, we're going to delete the compiled versions. So I'm going to sort by type. And MCC are the compiled versions. So I select the first, hold down Shift, click the last, and hit Delete. And I delete all the compiled ones. And we're only left with MCS files. I sort by name again. All right, the last thing to install is a screen. So on the left, I'm going to click on the Screens folder. And on the right, I'm going to click on that Screens folder. And we're going to drag the screen set Avid CNC ATC Corbin.set over to the Mach 4 Hobby Screens folder. And that's it. It should be installed. OK, I have a default install of Mach 4 in a test machine just to show you how to set everything up. So this is the default Avid screen set. And first of all, you might want to look at the History button here in the lower left and see if you have any errors other than what we see here, which is e-stop and ESS not responding because I'm not actually hooked up to a machine. So the thing that you have to do is do view load screen, select avid CNC underscore ATC underscore Corbin dot set. And that's going to load my custom screen set for you. And this is the custom screen set that I made. The first thing we have to do in Mach 4 is set up the input and output signals for the new hardware that we added. First, we have to make sure the machine is disabled. 
now we can configure things. And we're going to go configure, plugins, ESS. All right, and from here, we're going to go to the pins config tab. We want to rename port one pin one to be C step and draw bar, which I've already done. The direction should be out, active high, active low should be the red arrow pointing up. If you're using case pressurization for the high taco spindle, and then we're going to go down to port one, pin 17, and it's going to be set to an output signal. The red has to be up, and we want to rename it P117 fan and air pressure. Now, if you're using the air pressure check, we're going to scroll down to port two, pin 12, and we're going to rename the alias to be P212 drawbar pressure. We might add noise filtering later, but for now, it can be zero. This is an input, and the active high should be down. It should be green. Next, we're going to go to the output signals, and we're going to make sure that the motor five step doesn't have anything enabled on it because we're not going to be using that. We're overriding it. So inside this output signal, we're going to scroll down all the way and we're going to configure output six. You're going to hit enable and you're going to select C step and draw bar from the pin one mapping. If you're using the high taco spindle and you have the relay sub for the fan and air pressure, then you're going to set output seven to be P117 fan and air pressure. Next, we're going to go to input signals. And this is only necessary if you are using the drawbar pressure check. That's the only input we're using. We're going to scroll down to input 15. So here, input 15, you're going to enable it. And it's going to be set to P212, the drawbar pressure alias. And then you're going to hit OK. So after you've set up the pins, you're going to have to restart Mach 4. It's very important. OK, so now I'm at my actual machine. And I'm going to hit Enable. And we're going to home it. It's very important to home your machine when you're using an ATC. So now my machine is homed. And now we can actually set up the tool pockets. So the tool pockets are also known as tool stations or tool forks. And I kind of use all three things interchangeably. We're going to go to the ATC Tool Pocket Setup tab. And let's discuss some of the options that we have here. So first of all, the slide distance I'll discuss in a minute. That's how far it's going to actually slide when it picks up the tool. Wait time for spindle to stop. So this is how long your spindle takes to go from full speed down to zero speed. So I would set to something high at first, like 12 or 15 seconds. Z-bump we'll discuss later, but we can leave it at the default of 0.1 at first. Z-clearance, we're going to leave that at zero for now, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Case pressurization, so if you're using the high taco spindle and you have an option to turn the fan on and off, you're going to set this to on. Check air pressure. This, you, if you have an input on input 15 to tell if it has air pressure or not, then you're going to enable this. If you don't have that, disable it, otherwise your tool changes won't work. Also in the lower left, you'll see this green air pressure area to show if you actually have air pressure or not. First thing to do in this UI is look at the tool pocket editor section. You're going to click add tool pocket to add one tool fork. Or tool pocket or tool position or uh, tool station, whatever you want to call it. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the orientation based on what your actual tool fork is pointing. So my tool forks are pointing away in the Y plus. And if you have them pointing a different direction, doesn't matter where they are on the table, you want to set this correctly. And this is with regards to looking down from the front of the machine. We're going to add more tool forks or tool pockets later. It's better to set the coordinates on the first one. And then you can add another one, which will copy the settings to the next one, and then only modify the, say, the Y or X value as needed. All right, so let's go find that first tool fork or tool pocket position. 
to find the positions, you're going to need at least two of your tool holders and two quarter inch collets. So take one, take a quarter inch bit, and put it in upside down in your collet, and then tighten it down. All right. To find the pockets, it's going to be really handy to have a pendant to actually just move the machine around. If you don't have a pendant, you could also use a Bluetooth keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and insert the tool in the spindle. If you don't have a button on the side to release the drawbar, check out my previous video where I talk about how to add one to the S30C. Take another tool holder and insert a, another quarter inch collet into it and put it upside down in the tool fork. Don't tighten it very much, leave it a little bit loose. Jog the machine over to the tool fork and bring the Z down. Get it aligned up so that it's pretty closely aligned and start getting it closer and closer until it looks like it's perfectly aligned and then start going down the Z until it inserts a little bit. Kind of move it back and forth with your hand to make sure it's not going to push down and break the fork off or anything. At this point, we've found the X and Y position of the first tool pocket, and we can hit the Assign buttons for the X and Y position. Now let's go find the Z. So to find the Z, I remove the upside down tool holder from the tool fork. Then, in my particular case, I jog the Y all the way back. I don't want to move the X because we've already found the X. I jog it down on the Z and, and eyeball it until it looks like it's going to slide into the fork At that point, it looks pretty good, and I basically found the Z. Now I can go back over to the computer and hit a sign on the Z value. Okay, so next we're going to find the slide distance. So we're going to not change anything else. We're going to Y back all the way out. And basically what you want to make sure is that the tool holder is going to clear the forks. And if it's going to clear the forks going up and down, then you'll be good. And once you find this position, you can go back and look in your machine to see where your set for the other position was and see how far that distance needs to be for the slide. Okay, for the slide distance, so we have the position jogged where everything will clear right now. And so my machine coordinate is 98.5, tool pocket's a little bit forward, 96.8. And so to find the actual slide distance, we can just do some quick math. So 98.5 minus 96.86. And so we need a slide distance of at least 1.6 inches. So we're going to make the slide distance up here 1.6 inches. OK, now that we have one pocket set up, we should probably test it. So to test it, we're going to go from the ATC Tool Pocket Setup tab to the ATC Tools tab. And I'll describe this UI in a bit, but for now, we only have one pocket that we added. And so let's just assign any tool to it. Let's say Tool 1, so I type in 1 and hit Enter. Over here on the right, your current tool should be Tool 0. If it's not, type 0, hit Enter. This is what's in your actual spindle. Go ahead and remove the tool from your spindle, and let's do a test jog the spindle away from your tool pocket position so we can actually see it work. And we want everything to happen really slow. So let's go down to the rapid rate and set it to be like 45 inches per minute. So 45 and hit enter. And that's going to make everything happen really slow, which is great. Grab your e-stop and go over towards where your tool rack is and get ready to uh, e-stop in case something's going to collide. It's really scary doing the first test because the thing's going to get, the spindle's going to get really close to the pocket, and sometimes it looks like it's going to crash. To actually do the test, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fetch tool one. Now nothing is in the tool holders, everything's empty, and so we're going to go ahead and hit fetch. It's going to give you a warning. 
starting from tool zero, ensure this middle is empty, and hit yes. And it's going to really slowly go and do all the moves. Okay, the things that we're looking for in this test, with a fetch, we want to make sure that the spindle is coming directly above where the tool holder would be. And we're listening for the drawbar pressure to be open. We're listening for the drawbar pressure to close and then for the spindle to move out and go back up. If any of those things didn't happen, then you're going to have to figure out what was wrong. Okay, after the fetch test, a green background should appear on pocket one, indicating that tool one is now uh, in the actual holder, and current tool should say tool one. Really, the, the uh, number doesn't really matter right now. We're just doing a test and nothing's really in there. Now we want to test the putting back, so we're going to go ahead and hit the put back button and we're going to make sure that everything happens correctly. During the put back test, what we're looking for is that the spindle goes down and it slides forward into where the pocket is. We're waiting for the drawbar to open its spindle. You should hear the air coming through. And then it should go up and the tool will be removed. After you did the test, you can go from the ATC Tools tab back over to the ATC Tool Pocket Setup tab and now we can add additional pockets. So we're going to go ahead and click the Add Tool Pocket button, which is going to duplicate all the settings from Tool Fork 1 into Tool Fork 2, or really Pocket 2. I really should rename this. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the machine and jog in the, the X or the Y direction, whichever you need to go for your particular rack setup. So we'll jog over to the X position for the next pocket. And then we're going to repeat the steps of finding the location. In general, it should be really close to what was already there before. And so you can kind of jog around to the same coordinates and find it. Once you add a second pocket, go ahead and hit Add Tool Pocket and repeat the process for all the particular pockets that you have or tool stations. If you make a mistake, like you add too many, remove last tool pocket or remove the last one that you added. And you can go ahead in the drop-down list and select a particular one to see values and to change things. I haven't reassigned anything. And that's pretty much it for setting up the pocket positions. Okay, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the Z clearance setting. And so what that's for is when one tool is dropped off and there's nothing in the spindle and it's going to go pick up another tool, the spindle will, by default, the Z axis will move all the way to the top, Z0. Anything lower is negative. I have a 12 inch ball screw of movement, which is a lot. And you can save some time by not having to go all the way up. And you can just screw it across to the next one. So if you want it to be lower, you can jog to a lower position and hit a sign on the Z clearance. And we'll use that when it's moving from one empty position to another. Uh, the things to note is if you have a dust, uh, dust boot, you want to make sure it doesn't hit things like the tops of your tool forks or tool holders or whatever. The other setting to talk about is the Z bump. And for the Hiteco spindle, I really don't see a lot of push out. I've heard the S30C gets a lot of push out. And so you might need the Z bump to be higher. And what that means is when the tool is going to go and uh, release or pick up, um, it's one or the other, I can't really remember, it will stop a little bit higher to accommodate for push out of the tool to not make the forks bend as much. So the next thing we can do is actually start assigning tools to particular pockets. So a given tool number doesn't have to be in a particular pocket. And this is my actual mapping of what I'm using. Tool 20 is in pocket 1. Tool 12 is in pocket 2. Nothing is in pocket 3. And so what's important to note here is that tool 0 means nothing. So if you want to go and say remove tool 20 from pocket 0, you just type 0 and hit enter. And it gives you a warning, you want to override it, yes. And to put it back, type 20, hit enter, and it's back. You can also hit the remove button, which does the same thing without a warning. Go ahead and put it back. And you can go ahead and set up whatever tools you want in particular pockets. Things to note here is you can actually edit things in line. So I could put tool 1 in hit enter, and I can give that a name here, blah, 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 blah. And it updates the tool table. It updates the tool table automatically. So alternatively, you could hit the tool table button, and you see this 
to one now has a value in it. I'm going to delete that, hit enter, and remove it from here by hitting this remove button. So once you have tools all set up, it's still good to do an error test. So to do an error test, have no tools in any pockets, no tool in the spindle, and hit fetch from each button to actually go and fetch that one. So we go and fetch tool 20, make sure it works correctly, is in the correct position for pocket one, repeat it for pocket two, it's going to actually go and put back number one first and then fetch two, and so on. Repeat the process for all of them. If you don't have all the tools, you can actually just put a random unique number in each tool just to do a test because the heights and the names, nothing really matters at this point. It's just a test. Okay, so now it's time to explain this ATC Tools UI a little bit. So what we have here is for each of the pockets that you set up on the previous tab, you're going to have a row, up to 10 rows. If you have more than 10 pockets, the next 10 button and previous 10 buttons will be enabled to allow you to go to the next and previous ones. For each given pocket, you can put any particular tool into it. The height for it will be shown. Having a height assigned is very important, and I'll discuss how to set the height in just a minute. The description can be whatever you want. This is also set up in the tool table, which has a shortcut button over here. Editing this inline will automatically update the tool table. This little bracket and then 3 8 down. This I'll show a little bit later, but what this does is on the main program run tab, uses those values for the actual button names here, which is really handy to know what is in, in each in particular pocket. And I'll talk about this in a minute. So fetch, we'll actually go and fetch that tool, putting the current one back. Remove, just removes it from the UI, like I mentioned before. It does not do any operations or moves. Touch off doesn't work yet because I haven't implemented it. What we have over here on the right, we have the current tool that's in the spindle. If you do not have a tool in the spindle, it should be tool zero. Whenever you assign a tool in the spindle, so let's say I go and put one particular tool in the spindle. Let's say I'm going to put tool 20 manually in the spindle. You type 20, hit enter, and it's going to automatically activate the height, which is important. Essentially, this does a M6 G43. What that means isn't really important, unless uh, you want to know more details. And so that's assuming that you have that one in the spindle now. It highlights it in green. Down at the bottom, which is always shown, is also the same information. Tool 20 is in the spindle. H20 means that what particular height is active. And it also shows the height of that tool. You hit the put back button, and it will put it back. We could also just manually remove it. If you manually remove it, you got to tell it. Zero, enter. If you hit fetch, it will fetch it, and it will automatically do the tool change for you. All right, other things we have on this UI, drawbar open close will control the drawbar like, uh, like the standard one from the S3C. If you hit this when the machine is actually running, the spindle is on, it might open the spindle and throw things out, so be very cautious about it. So I'm not going to discuss the MTC, the manual tool change options. These are copied from the Avid CNC set for manual tool changes. And you can use those, and they should work if a tool is requested that's actually not in the list. OK, so now I'm going to talk about the main user interface tab on my custom screen set. And I should note, you don't have to use my custom screen set. After you set up all the tool pocket positions, you can just use whatever screen set you want, as long as my macros are still being used. So just something to think about, because I did remove a lot of things that were related to a torch and a laser, since I don't have those things. So for the main UI, I did move some things around. The digital readouts are now always visible, which is just super handy. You always want to see those. The enable button is the first thing you're going to hit when you start your machine. And so home is really close, because that's the next thing you're going to hit. When you go to turn your machine off, you're going to want to be pretty close to its home. So go to machine home goes just a little bit off the X and Y home position. So the next time you turn it on, it'll be faster to home. The other new things down here are the current tools. So T12 is my current tool. If I manually remove the tool from the spindle, I would want to type the new one in. If you remove the tool and there's none in it, zero and hit enter. When you put another one back into it, you got to tell it. 
Air pressure will be green if you have that enabled, as I discussed before. When you start the machine back up and start Mach 4, the height won't be active. And so that's just a Mach 4 thing. Not really a big deal, but something to maybe be aware of. The G code you run will probably set the height. So we also have this other fetch pocket section up here that I added. This is a button for each pocket. And I discussed before how to set the custom name labels in the ATC Tools tab. Uh, put back, we'll put back the tool, hitting any given button, we'll go and fetch it, putting back the current one uh, if there's one in the spindle. I moved G-code related stuff all together. It was on a separate tabs, which is just a little bit weird before. This is the manual tool change portion, which was also buried a bit before. And so if a tool is requested that's not in your rack, you can do a manual tool change and resume your G-code. So at this point, everything should be set up and should work properly. You can go ahead and put all your tools in the particular pockets. The pocket numbers will never change, so I label those. But the tools, it might change, so I just put a piece of blue tape on it with my current tool on it. Just let me know what's there. So that's kind of it for the basics now. There are two important things you're going to have to do to actually make it all work. You're going to have to set the tool heights and you're going to have to set the post processor to generate the right M6 command to change the tool. I'm going to discuss those in the next video because I'm kind of just running out of time in this video. So stay tuned everyone and thanks. Bye.